question and we do not have this answer, we will try to give the questions once, once more. If we will not have the answer, okay, once more. But if we will not have answer even in third, three times, then we will go away. So you, you will have to uh, notify this when you have to give the answer without losing the, this tension. Uh, but also when we are talking about the games, about the games, uh, we will have to remember that the track is looped every time because uh, we do not know how much the gamer will play your game. And when the track is looped, it means that your question and answers will be given many times. So you have to make a tune and your question and answer in that key that it will be looped. Yeah, this is the magic also too, because it all bases on your, you know, some kind of a feeling inside, your composer feeling. Let's go further. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, then when we have a tune, let's start to make an arrangement. Try to begin and finish in minimal dynamic range. Why? Because it will be looped. If you will start from, uh, you know, a lot of instruments and uh, triplet forte, then what you will do further, you will not have this increasing of your melody, of your music. And also, it will be looped and it will be boring because it will be uh, too much, too much and too much. Uh, and uh, also you have to remember that uh, the music in game, it is not single. You will have an affixes, you will probably have uh, voiceovers, so do not forget about it. Your track is looped, so do not show to the listener your beginning and your end. Yeah, this is the tip. You have, you have to, uh, you can show and start your, uh, giving your questions and answers, but you have to make this, you know, buffer, buffer uh, in the beginning, in the end, so when it will be looped, it will not be boring and it will not be too sharp, you know, when it begins again. Uh, also remember that the amount of the instruments has a very big influence of the dynamic of the track. So that I was, uh, I told you about that uh, if you are trying to make a track with all the, uh, you know, VC plugins and all instruments and all synthesizers that you have in your library, it will not be too good. We will talk about it a few slides further. Um, and also, all the phrases have to be in one mood. Uh, the sub sharp changing, changes will be, you know, not too good. Why? It is looped, <laughs> once again. If you will have, you know, a guitar solo inside your soundtrack, do not forget, it will be repeated. If the soundtrack is uh, for one minute length, it means that your solo can be uh, repeated for uh, 10, 12, 50 times. It will be not too good, it will be too sharp. So, try to avoid it. Once more, do not make start and finish. It's of course, not for cinematics, because cinematics is like a movie sound. Make it clear. It's for an arrangement. Um, you know, in philosophy and metaphysics, we have a golden rule called Britva Okama. It's uh, like when you're uh, decreasing something, and then uh, you will find uh, this uh, pleasant sound. First method for me make it, uh, of making clear an arrangement in my soundtracks, and when I have a ready-made soundtrack, yeah, it sounds good for me, okay. But then I will try to uh, mute 
this, their tracks from, from the top till the end. Till this moment when I notify that I'm losing something. Tension or uh, melody structure or something like this. So in arrangement, you will, if you are professional composers, you understand what I mean. I mean about uh, you know strings, cymbals, um, heavy guitars, uh, SFXs. I mean the like from synthesizer or something like this. The other method is when you're trying to unmute all your tracks. So you're muting all the tracks in your session and then trying to unmute them till you will find that sound is starting to, to be harsh and something is already over there. And this, uh, this will tell you how to not to drone in your music because this is the, the, you know, uh, the most complicated thing in writing soundtracks, in writing music. Then if you are uh, starting to do something with your music, it is very pleased for you because it's your music and you're starting to drown there. You are starting to not uh, hear your own mistakes your own um, over drive because you're starting to put everything on uh, behind or uh, over and over and over because from from one thing you you always uh, will hear you know that something is missing because you already hear it for a couple of hours a couple of days so try to make the arrangement clear always it doesn't matter method one or two, or will you will find your individual method, how to make it clear, but you have to do this because you're drowning in your own music, always. It's normal, it's physics. Uh, and of course, remember that your track is for the game and not the game for your track. You will have voiceovers over, you will have SFXs, you will have etc, 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 things that game designer wants from you. Okay, always take a break. This guy didn't do it. And the mix was almost perfect. Take a break every 30 and 40 or 45 minutes not too long break, of course, if you're smoking or if you're drinking too much coffee, it, it will be too harmful for your health. But take a break, um, listen to other, other music, drink some water, uh, talk with your friends, call your mama. Uh, because after those 30 and 45 minutes uh, of break, you know, you will not really, uh, you will be surprised how the music or even sounds changed. Yeah, it's really changed because you're just trying, uh, after this break, you will hear, uh, hear it like uh, another person because your ears will be relaxed and you will hear the different picture. Uh, and, you know, do not push yourself to do something, it's wrong. It's wrong. When you do not have, you know, uh, like, a, I don't want to call it an inspiration, but if you don't want to do something, just try to have a break. Even do it next day. It will be better because you will do something quickly. Yeah. Um, and also mixing and mastering uh, will, will have to take place only on the next day because uh, our ears, uh, they, the physical construction of our ears is made by nature like that we have to work with the sound not more than four, five, four, sorry, four hours. Of course we can work more and we work more. Of course we work more. Everybody knows it. Uh, okay, who work more? Ah, okay, yes, of course. Uh, why? Because those uh, game designers and programmers, they do not understand that we have to work four hours 
and uh, they always call us and tell, oh, no, no, you have to do this yesterday. Okay, and you work further. Okay, I understand, but try, try to remember this. Try to remember that after all, uh, each four hours, each four hours, it means that we work more than eight hours. Okay, after four hours, <laughs> you, have to, you have to remember that you are wrong. Do not do the things that you are not, you know, sure that is, it is really, really good. Because on the next day, uh, when you will listen your genius track, <laughs> you will break your PC, I don't know, mock or something like this, and you will, you, you will not be able to look at yourself at the mirror. Okay, let's go further. Um, mixing about mixing. It's a very, very complicated process and, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, another type of art. Uh, in USA or in, uh, you know, Great Britain, I've uh, met guys who uh, do only mixing, only mixing. They are not writing music, they only mix music uh, because it's, it's good. Because when you're writing music, you're drowning in your music. Uh, you're starting to forget about the majority of the tracks or the majority of the solo instruments, something like this. Like, uh, I have my friend, he is a sound engineer. He did not play guitar, you know, he, he can't. He is a keyboard player, but he loves guitar sound too much that when he uh, is mixing his own tracks, the guitar is on the top. The vocalist is somewhere there. Guitar is on the top. The drums, oh, and the drums are over there because the guitar is on the top. That, that he has to use this thing that like, like mixing in uh, anyone's other studio because guitar is on the top. So, uh, but in usual things, uh, we all mix. We all mix, we all master, because it is quicker, it is cheaper for the guys that hire us. So we have to do this, and we have to know how to do this. These tips that I have in this slide uh, are from my experience and uh, from experience of my friends and my teachers. I've tried to gather it all in one slide, but you know that is a very complicated process. It, it, is, not, it, it is unreal. To, to, to make it all in one speech, but my mixing method is for the first, reverberation has to be the same in all of the instruments, because you know that we usually use uh, VST banks like, you know, libraries from Contact, libraries from Omnisphere, from others, VST, famous synthesizers or famous uh, manufacturers of the libraries. All those instruments are recorded in different uh, rooms, different holes with uh, their natural reverberation. There are no libraries uh, that I know that are uh, really dry, you know, because it is unreal to record violin good uh, in very dry condition. It will not be good because uh, the violins or cellos or uh, contrabasses or uh, wood, woodwinds, for example, they are made to uh, sound in some hole, in some uh, environments. So when we are putting all those different stuff in one track, we have, uh, you know, this problem that they are uh, sound in one time but in different environments. Uh, I have um, a one uh, case when I wrote a symphonic soundtrack. It was good. It was good for me, of course. But uh, it sounds, you know, like, like the musicians are playing together but not together. It was good but not good. What I've done then, I've put the rever reverber on the master track and put this mix for, I think, for 8%. It was a cathedral reverber uh, per set from 
reverence, who use reverence in Kibbutz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and in that moment, the soundtrack started to glue in, you know, this reverb glued my soundtrack uh, and it started to sound like the orchestra and choir is playing, uh, are playing in one envir environment and um, that this soundtrack was recorded in really some cathedral and they are, were playing professional musicians or something like this. It was really good. Uh, so it's like um, my suggestion to try to do this when you're uh, when you're making uh, making your music. But f for me, it is uh, very useful in uh, orchestral soundtracks. You know, um, a cueing uh, then pres uh, then the process next step is a cueing all instruments to avoid masking effects. I will. I will explain what I mean in the next slide. Uh, then, for me, I'm doing the next thing. I'm decreasing the volume on the, all the tracks on the mix panel. If you're uh, working on a Cubase or in, in Logic, it doesn't matter. They all have this mix panel. I'm decreasing it to the minus 24. And then uh, making balances, like starting from drums. I'm increasing volume of the drum to the zero because the drums they are on the top. They are uh, this pulse of your pulse of your soundtrack and they are really major. Then drums, then if you have vocals, then lead instruments. So I'm making this balance of volume because I have already cued them. I have this reverb. Then I'm doing the balance of the volumes. And then are the instruments in, in the end will be the basis, basis and then as affixes. If you will do, for my example, if I'm making this mixing, it, it, it will have a time to do this. It will have a time. It, for, for an hour or two hours you can, you know, play with this balances, volume balances. But if you will do this right, you will not have a problem as with... Um, uh, volumes uh, in mastering, when you will do the mastering. And remember, uh, when you're mixing down the track, do it in minus 6 dB to avoid uh, distortion. Why? Um, a lot of manufacturers of the door, doors that we are uh, working in, it doesn't matter what, they are trying to uh, avoid distortion when we are mixing down in 0 dB. And they are putting a uh, not showed for us uh, compressors there. We do not know about it. We cannot avoid it. But if you're down in, down in your master uh, fader to minus six or even, even less, uh, we, are, uh, we will avoid of this compressor working too, too hard, too, too sharp, sorry. Uh, also, there will be a situation when you will uh, when you will have a situation that in all your mix, mix, mix on your mixing panel something is uh, too quiet, some instrument or even SFX is too quiet, and you will try to make the fader higher than zero. Uh, for example, in Cubase we have this possibility. I think that I can uh, put uh, out the fader higher than to uh, higher than two, uh, two dB over zero, yes? Do not do this, because it's, it's really wrong. If something is too quiet, then even in uh, sounding in zero dB of your fader, it means that all other tracks sound too loud. So make it quiet. Maybe even, even if you know about this, um, try to start, just to start over, but relax to have a break like in previous, uh, previous slide, or even do this in the next day, maybe everything is all right. And uh, remember, do not mix uh, over, than, over than four hours because it's, it's really not good. It's really not good that if you are mixing, for me, if I'm mixing one track more than two hours, without any break, I mean, 
uh, that is that it, it, I don't like it. It means for me that something is wrong because if you write the arrangement right, in the right way, you will know how to mix it in quickly time. But always, also, always mix. The major uh, mistake uh, that uh, the beginners have that uh, when they wrote the arrangement, they listened this arrangement and oh my God, it's so good, I'm genius. And they are, do not start to mix. No, mix. Make all instruments down and then start from the beginning. It's another uh, part of art. Okay, let's go further. Uh, this is about the uh, mask and effect. Uh, not a lot of people uh, or sound engineers uh, explain this. Maybe my experienced colleague know what I'm talking about, but for uh, other guys I will explain. So for, for example, this, this is an example of sounding f uh, of bass, bass drum and bass. Yeah? So this is the bass drum uh, frequency, for example. And this is the bass frequency, for example. Uh, when we have uh, the volume of those guys here on zero and here on zero, when they are starting to, starting to sound together, uh, they will have this crossing frequency here. And this will call mask and effect. Why? Because uh, the volume here will be increased. This will be like a sum of volume of those uh, frequencies here. What to do to avoid this? Because when you will start to mix, you will have here some like woo -woo or something like this. Uh, in every time, the bass drum and bass has to be separated in their frequency range. For example, you can cut with LFO, you can cut here, and with LFO, you can cut here. And then here you will have uh, the straight line, you know. So the same situation is for the, is for, the um, for example, f with the vocals. Uh, if you recognize in uh, the worldwide hits uh, of rock music, you will have uh, very huge guitars, distortion guitars. They are sounding bright, good, and powerful. But in the same time, the vocals sound bright, good, and powerful, and you hear very loud guitars, and you hear a very loud vocal. Uh, when we are talking about Ukrainian guys, or um, Russian guys, or uh, you know, beginners in rock music, uh, many times, uh, and as for me too, when I was started to, 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 to sing rock music, it was the biggest problem that uh, when you have a huge guitars, the vocals is down there. Why? Because of this uh, mask and effects. Uh, the guitars, uh, distortion guitars, they are sounding somewhere here, and as for the vocals, the same. So you will have to decrease in guitars, like a notch filter, uh, decrease this uh, frequency for 2 dBs, something like this. Also, the same situation for the vocals and uh, pianos. Yeah, okay, I understand. Um, okay, adaptive soundtracks. Uh, adaptive soundtracks is, uh, yesterday I had a conversation with uh, the one developer who uh, asked me what to do if something is changing in the game they really do not know about it. So, uh, who knows what does it mean, adaptive soundtrack? Uh, okay, I will explain. Um, adaptive soundtrack means that uh, if something changes in the game, it influences in the music. But not always changing like uh, this was a gameplay soundtrack and then battle becomes and this is the battle soundtrack, no. It means that uh, something changing in, in the soundtrack, uh, like uh, the battle soundtrack uh, sounds when s char character is fighting with another character, then when the one character fighting with two other characters, uh, something is add to the soundtracks. So I don't know, the, par uh, the drums or guitars are starting to play the same soundtrack, it becomes like more you know, more uh, huge. 
Okay, so I've uh, I've read a couple of books about it. I've talked uh, uh, with a lot of pizza people about it. I've seen uh, lots of YouTube videos, something like this. So for me, I've decided to have a two methods of the adaptive soundtracks. The first is uh, layering, like a sandwich, because uh, so you are you have this bottom of the soundtrack then like like sandwich eat a sandwich you know you you hear this and this is the okay animation wow and this is the mm, this is the scam like it works in uh, with with your music so you are writing the whole soundtrack whole or oh, full genius so pleased for you and then you're just trying to separate it by the task that your sound or your game designer is giving to you. So for example, here is the strings are sounding in calm, some calm condition. Then, you know, contrabasses starting to play when something is changing in the game. Then drums and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like sound sandwich, okay? And it can be minus it in the same way. Uh, Andre uh, was telling the previous uh, previous talk. He was uh, uh, he told us about uh, W Vice and F Mode. They are helping to do this in the case in the you know in the studio. It is more um, more qualified and uh, have to have more quality because we sound designers and music composer are doing this, are, you know, in F mode and using by W Vice, so we have a possibility to, uh, to, to do this in, in professional way. But even if your uh, customer do not want to use it, he can do this by uh, using his programmer. Oh. So, but um, the, this, this method is, is good, but uh, the this, the ways to, to do this is lots of ways. So it's like uh, those four lines are playing together all the time, but some of them are really mute. And I'm unmuted in the, in the mm, uh, moment that you want to, or a programmer want to. Uh, and it will, be, it will be not too good uh, because if, if we are talking in profession, professional, uh, you know, tax system, because uh, everybody knows that major measures in four by four or three by four, and here we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then bases have to include be included in some of the part of the stack. But what to do if the um, character is starting to fight without this metronome beating? Motherfucker. Okay, but so it means that we have to we, we this this not ideal too, but okay, the second method is the like having a meal. You're starting from the soup, then your second dish, then this muffin, then compote. <laughs> and uh, this means that you have to use cross fading. So you have the first part. Then something is happening, then second part, something has happened, then third part. And they are cross-fading. You, you know what I mean, cross-fading, so like uh, volume in first part is decreasing, volume in next part is uh, increasing. Uh, so it too can be uh, used by using uh, uh, F mode or W wise. I didn't work in W wise, I can tell about F mode. Uh, it, it's very easy to do this there, um, okay? And uh, you know, it really depends of of your uh, you know of your taste, what to do, what what to use. Okay, next, you can buy this book, the magic mastering magic. I found it there somewhere in internet. Uh, I didn't read it. But I want it. Uh, everybody, uh, you know, almost uh, almost times when you're starting to uh, work with the sound, you're trying um, our user, our listener today, 
For the first one to hear it as much, as much louder. This loudness, uh, madness is proceeding further and further and everybody wants to, wants his soundtracks or music sounds as much louder as, as you can. Um, so that's why mastering. In previous time, mastering was called only for, uh, you know, for a vinyl. Uh, recorders uh, to to avoid uh, harshness there. Uh, okay, a few tips uh, from what I start to mastering. Everybody knows the picture of the queue, you know. Who knows what is this? Yeah, yeah. I love this guy. But okay, this is a queuing. Uh, I try to start from cutting low frequencies and high frequencies. Um, a lot of guys afraid of do this. Like, uh, I don't want to cut the slow frequencies because this is a power or something like this or something like this. Or uh, the high frequencies. Uh, do not afraid of this because even if you're uh, cutting here, uh, not too good, from <laughs> 100, it doesn't mean that you will not have here any frequencies you will uh, make them, uh, you know, not too big. Because uh, you, in your studio, you have a professional speakers, you have a subwoofers, something like this. And, but this thing, this thing, do not have this. Yeah, it's really a big problem that we are, you know, music composers and sound designers, they are very good guys. They want to give everybody a professional acoustic. Everybody needs to have a subwoofer, but life is cruel and everybody have only mobile devices. So these frequencies are not used there. Not always. And also in the next, um, next stage, uh, it will be much more easier uh, to compress all this stuff. Yep, next. Uh, also, the next. Cut harm harmful frequencies. Uh, as talking about a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, EQs, uh, not especially isotope, also in fab filters, also in logics, uh, logic EQs and uh, Cubase EQs, Sainbergs, I mean, uh, they have a bottom when you can hear the, you know, the, this frequency there you are searching. And you can just, just put it and try to listen all the frequencies in all the frequency range and you will hear in one moment when some frequencies it is too much. Then try to decrease it. It, it's a normal process, because you have a lot of tracks, a lot of instruments, a mix down in process, it can be. Okay. Uh, also, do not do this. It's for me. Do not increase, only decrease. If something you have to, do, to increase, it means that something is wrong in the mix down. Something ro is wrong in mixing, in uh, mixing process or in a queuing process when you were mixing. So, and um, what I was, ah, okay. Uh, and uh, so do, do not do this. And also, uh, if you have to decrease something more than minus 3 dB, it means that you have to come back to mix. Because you've done something wrong there. Okay? Uh, about uh, about uh, compression, dynamic range, it's a problem. What we are doing, like this or, or only this? You have to do this, but uh, this cruel mobile life uh, in most of the mobile devices, they are very, you know, tough in this thing. So we have to compress, 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 oh my god. Uh, but uh, do, not, do not forget that compression kills your dyna dynamics, so you will, not, you will not have this for us in most of the futures when you're um, increasing compressor too much your piano, piano parts starting to uh, sound more loudness than your forte parts. Uh, and ju just to, just to, uh, to uh, avoid this, listen, uh, like a piano part, then forte part, piano part, forte part, and even 
when the matters on your mastering sheet, I don't know where you're mastering, will show you that the forte part is more huge, you will recognize it by your ear. Do not believe in matters, believe in your ear. Uh, the maximizer is also a very tough thing. I do not have too much time to talk about it, but um, when, you're when you're trying to work with a maximizer, and when you will put it in the end, try to uh, put the selling thing to the, to the zero, and you will hear then what maximizer doing. And not always uh, putting your loudness to the highest end, but the maximizer in the, um, most of the times they are working with the high frequencies. So when the selling will be on here, you will hear what he is doing with your mix. Ah, okay, yeah. Do not do a sound worse. Yeah, really, you can with your master, because when you're finished mastering, you're genius. You're, oh my God, it sounds too good. But on the next day, and on the same day, listen to the mix and listen to the mastering. If mixing version is uh, sounding better than your mastering version, that you've done something wrong on the mastering process. Do not ruin your mixing. Do not ruin it. Okay, uh, about looping, a few words. My method, one. Mixing down the track when it is in the session. I'm uh, cutting it, replace it, replacing the part. Then mixing down it. Still my genius track. Uh, then, <laughs> when I have already mixed it track, then I'm cutting it once again in other software. I use most of times uh, Sony Vegas. I don't know, I love it. Uh, oh my god, okay, and then I rearranged it, and then mixing, and then mastering, okay. Uh, why? Because of the reverberation tails, because if you will mix it down and then starting to, to cut without this first cutting in your mix down session, you will have this problem. You will not be able to make this crossfade right you will hear the beginning, or your client will hear the beginning and make your brains out. Uh, okay, so where is the magic? Marilyn is too angry and asked me where is the magic. This is the magic. That all those things that I was talking about like mathematics, these things are magic because magic begins when we are going out from this hole because we are magicians. Uh, you know, I've, when I've started to make music, uh, and I've, when I was making this music year by year, year by year, it was simple for me. Uh, simple for me, the sound of violence. Simple for me to record the violin, to record the cello. Uh, when you're starting the, to record the live cello for the first time, it's so magic, you know? Because it's live. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, to uh, write a lot of n n scores because even one score played by the good musician, by good musician uh, in live good cello, it sounds so magic. But when you're doing it for a 50, 50, 50 times, you know, it's just like becomes mm, and everybody, oh my God, and you're, uh, where is my coffee? So the magic begins from all, all these tips are mathematics, but on another side, these are magic. The magic in, is in finding tune, the magic in finding zero minutes of my speech and something like this. Thank you guys for listening. Maybe you have some questions. I will help you to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Taras. Okay. These are my contacts. Uh, maybe microphone, no? Hi, I'm Peter. I have a few questions. Uh, do you have any recommendation how long should be the, how long should last the loop? If we are saying that the uh, standard game sessions last for 10 minutes, what do you recommend as a uh, game loop 
uh, duration? Uh, as for me, uh, if the game session is 10 minutes, then the best loop is 10 minutes. But uh, the practice says that one minute is enough. One minute is enough. If uh, the loop is interesting, if it uh, you know, been written interesting, and in right condition, one minute will be enough. I've wrote, uh, I've had uh, customers that wanted me to write four minutes tracks and even five minutes tracks. But you know, for the, f mm, uh, for the practice, uh, if you have a five minute file, it, it, it will be too huge. And the, the you know, huge, uh, the weight, my megabytes, yes. gigabytes. And also, uh, do not forget, but, but do not forget, uh, to write 10 minutes track, f as for me, it's just easier than uh, writing one minute loop. Because when you're writing one minute loop, uh, you do not have this space to tell all that you want. And this will be looped, it will not, it has, ha has no right to be boring. But when you're writing 10 minutes on track, everybody will forget what was there in, in the beginning. You can ha ha, blah, 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 something like this. You know? Okay. Hmm? If okay, you, I've if, answered it. Yes, if you, if you have been talking about the layering, about the sandwich and the dishes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you, uh, so, so you mean that was also for the loops, right? Yeah, of course. So, so you did several loops with different instruments, for example, with the layers, what you have been saying, that you do it, uh, with uh, just the strings yeah, and yeah, just the, uh, as I said, as I said, I'm doing the final soundtrack, the mm, you know, with all instruments, all the dynamic ranges, something like this, and then separating it on the mix down process. So, so the developers then uh, enable the second layer or the third level? Yeah, yeah, they are all looped. It's like uh, when uh, all those tracks will be um, on. It will be like sounding like a completed soundtrack. Okay, and my final question, did you do some sounds for slot machines, for casino games? Uh, you pers do if you did some uh, soundtracks, loops for the slot machines, casino slot machines? I did for casual games. I didn't do for uh, slot machines. Maybe it's my, you know, uh, specializa specialization that I mostly do uh, soundtracks for, uh, you know, like, um, Warcraft games or uh, casual games, but with a special thematic. So with the casino, I didn't work yet, but life is, you know, the planet is like a big ball. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you know that uh, mixes for like Madonna, they use pink noise uh, for, like, yeah. for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes when I like finish track and everything is perfect and everybody said it's perfect, it's not pink noise. So it's like some feeling that it could be better. But is it really could be better if I made everything for pink noise? Uh, you know, uh, the latest version of the isotope uh, uh, ozone had also, uh, uh, they have also this pink noise uh, verifying system uh, that uh, when Isotope is analyzing your track uh, and starting to add there a pink noise. Uh, not to adding, but analyzing what you have to change in uh, when you're listening to pink noise. Also, there is a, you know, um, a mastering method when you're uh, putting two tracks, one your track, and one track is pink noise, and trying to increase the volume of the pink noise, and then uh, you will hear, uh, do you have the high frequencies to harshness or no? Uh, about adding pink noise to your mix, I think that uh, it can be a good experiment, but I had an experiment by adding white noise to my mix. Uh, it was um, added in, uh, in um, EDM tracks. And there, you know, it's like some kind of physics, of course it's physics, but it's a kind of a magic thing that uh, when you're adding this noise, uh, the tracks, uh, the track is starting to sound, you know, um, glue it, or uh, more analog. 
It's from the past times when we were listening vinyl, uh, when we were listening, uh, you know, um, cassettes, or and they all, uh, all the analog uh, things have this white white noise. For example, uh, if uh, somebody knows about um, uh, the uh, universal audio and. Uh, Oh, well, I don't. I don't remember this. The manufacturer of those plugins. Um, they are really have a, the uh, pl plugins, VST plugins for for using door. They have even uh, this knob of noise reduction. If you do not push it, you will have this special white noise of analog devices in your in your mix. That's that's why they are adding the noise because it becomes more for me. It becomes more analog sound. And more warmer. I don't know. Have I answered on your questions? But uh, maybe um, I use uh, like comparing with pink, sound, pink noise for each track. Mm -hmm. But in, in the end, I also compare it. But you know that its frequencies like this for pink noise, mm -hmm. and like my track is like something like. But in pink noise, it's all it sounds good. But should I uh, make it really like this? No. In the end? You know why no? Because you have to believe in your ears. Do not believe, uh, uh, you know, straight in mathematics. Do not believe straight in mathematics because uh, not always uh, that we have in our ears. You know, I've listened uh, for a couple of days ago, I've listened to uh, one of the tracks that was uh, made by um, one of the stars uh, from our days of the EDM music. I, I've recognized that it mixed wrong yeah really wrong the feels of the drums are too loud the compressors are too harshness and too too much increased but this is hit it has a millions of youtube uh, you know viewers and uh, listeners and etc 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 it means that not always you have to uh, guide to through this rule because uh, if you are not guiding, not always to this rule, it becomes that this rule is right. <laughs> it's like a mathematics rule. So do not do always, do not do always, uh, you know, things because this guy will be angry on you. So this is the tip of the magic, you know. Do believe in your ears. Тарас, спасибо за интересный доклад. И у меня вопрос из категории наболевшим из индустрии. Мы обговариваем такую штуку, что есть у нас композиторы, есть у нас технические специалисты по сведению мастеринга звука, но у нас в индустрии очень сильно это искривлено, потому что все хотят иметь готовый продукт на выходе, заплатить за это мало. Особенно для фрилансов. Я не работаю на фрилансе, слава богу, но... Когда же мы начнем людям объяснять, что музыканты это не миксинг-инженеры, это не инженеры по мастерингу, и когда музыканты наконец начнут заниматься музыкой, а не тем, что понятно, мы всегда используем все эти технические средства в художественных целях или каком-то там своем, чтобы показать инженеру, что мы видим, как мы это хотим услышать, но у нас же куча просто офигенных специалистов технических. Они, возможно, бывшие музыканты, но они не специализируются ни на музыкальной драматургии uh -huh. полностью. Ну, вы понимаете, о чем я. Но клиент, у нас это настолько искривлено, что клиенту объяснить, что человек по мастерингу и по сведению, это совершенно два разных специалиста. Stop, because I will try to cry, okay? Окей. То есть, ну, я бы о том, что, возможно, давайте, когда это как крик души, композиторы, начнем объяснять нашим дорогим клиентам, что нужно ходить к инженерам, нужно ходить к мастеринг инженерам, иметь их в командах и так дальше. Спасибо. Окей. Okay. Uh, I agree. I agree. It will end, it will end when they will start not to, you know, count money too much. <laughs> ne, ne, okay. It was good presentation. Okay, Thank I will you. start to cry. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was very pleased for me. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.